Welcome to our celebrating the 30th anniversary of the 5th 3rd Riverbank Run. And then we're here with the guy who is more associated with this race than anybody else, Greg Meyer. How you doing, Greg? Uh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. 30 years. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> Very old. Well, you don't look it. And uh, Greg, you have, I'm sure, 30 years worth of memories, but they kind of break down in segments. Let's talk about the first one, 1978. You brought some of your friends along to Grand Rapids to run the race. What was it like back then? Actually, um, Bill Rogers came in that first year, and we had just gotten to be friends at the World Cross Country Championships earlier that spring. And um, I remember that race probably better than any other one. I remember Doug Curtis and a few of the other, because it was a, a primarily a Michigan uh, running field at that point, elite field. And I can remember Billy at about three or four miles going, when we get to the bridge, let's crush him. You know, and that, that was Billy, and, and, and he did, but I was part of the crush, you know. But uh, he ended up running a distant second to Billy, but uh, that was the start of it. I mean, that, that, was, that had special – I remember running through the ankle-deep puddles that morning because of the rain and things and uh, on a dirt road that they ran us on. And it was just, it was just a great feeling to be able to race like that in Grand Rapids. Well, Grand Rapids is your hometown, and you brought brought Billy to Grand Rapids, and since he won that first race, he lent a little bit of star power to it, but he wasn't the last star who came to the race. What are, who are some of the other people you remember racing in those early years? Actually, I think, that, you know, the, the person who stands out the most is Joan Benoit Samuelson. Um, the fact that she set the existing world record at that point when she was here, and then also, you know, going on to win an Olympic gold medal, you know, that, that sort of adds some credibility to your race, you know. But, but, but Joni was a special friend, and, you know, and Joni made great friends in Grand Rapids, like most of the athletes do when they come year after year. Marty Allen, who founded the race for the bank, became great friends with Joni, and they still stay in touch. Um, so, you know, that, then the other elites that came through, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, Joseph Kariuki's done well for himself. Kim Jones has come back and forth. Um, Bill Reif Snyder. I mean, there's a lot of names in the sport of running who have come through at, at any given time and run very well. Well, you also ran very well. You won it seven times. You took home seven of those Calder trophies. And uh, one other person who actually won a lot of them herself was Diane Vusa Brewer. Can, what can you tell us about Diane? Diane was just a tough competitor. She was just very tough, very competitive, um, but a fun person. You know, uh, she would come in and, like most of the athletes, run hard, party hard. Um, so we loved having her come back. You know, but she's she's doing well. She's living out in Colorado now, still racing as a master, and and um, I think she was doing some coaching as well. But. Um, she just dominated, I believe, five times. Um, she's she's a, was an amazing, still is an amazing athlete. Let's talk about the course a little bit. Um, it hasn't really changed very much, except for the one year when it was changed a lot for construction. Uh, did you help lay out the course? No, not really. Um, actually, in the early years, it ran the reverse way. You went out on the other side of the river and then came back through um, downtown more. Uh, Wealthy Street, which was a little hard. You had to go up over the freeway. So there were hills in the last few miles, and then you looped back down through Grand Rapids. Um, and then they've reversed it over the years. The one year that really did me in was 1983. After I'd won Boston, came back in, the river was flooded. So they ran us out and back on Butterworth, which is hilly. Um, wow. That took a toll. <laughs> it was like, ooh, this hurts. Uh, but for the most part, it's always been along the river, no matter what. And, and that's the one constant. We zigzag now and then we've changed due to construction, but we always run out to bridge, you know, out on Wilson and we, and we come back. And it's, you see a big group of people have to turn around and you know, you know you're on your way home. I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about a race where the course stays fairly consistent is you get to tweak your strategy over the years. What are some of the things that you did when you won to beat the other people? Um, the first year I won, there wasn't much of a strategy. It was, I ran really hard from the gun. I, I think I went out in like 29.18 or something. I still remember that, 29.18, um, just trying to pump people. And I was lucky enough where I didn't die too bad. I think I set the American record that second year. But um, later on, as I became older and wiser, I'd break it up into three segments. So, Greg, although you're known for the Boston Marathon and, of course, the 25K Riverbank Run, 
You had some American records at shorter distances like the 8K, the 10K, the 15K, and the 10 mile. Uh, what What is it about the 25K that made it such a strong race for you? Um, I think it was the combination of strength and speed. Um, I was lucky. There was one point in there back in the late 70s, early 80s, where I think I had everything from 8K to 25K. Um, yeah, it's, it's like it didn't last long, but for that least brief period of time. Um, but it, it's the combination of speed and strength. And, you know, a lot of it fit into just the kind of training that I was brought up on. You know, the, sort of the Warhurst mentality there, you know. Um, it's not that you need to be fast, you need to be strong. And it, it, it really fit me. I think um, I was lucky especially when it came to the 25K, because I think my best distances were 15 to 25K. You know, I just felt comfortable there. You've also been an elite athlete coordinator for quite a few years, and we'd like to hear you talk about some of them, but especially Joseph Kariuki. He 25K seems to have been his distance, and he had the world record there for a while. What's Joseph like? Uh, Joseph is a wonderful, wonderful person, um, as are most of the foreign athletes, and especially the Kenyans. They're uh, just they're a, a kind people. They race hard, but they don't get caught up into the minutia of what some athletes can. And I remember Joseph, he got so attached to one of our um, elite athlete coordinators, um, Trish Vandenberg, uh, he, you know, I, I'll give you three cows for her. You know, he was teasing. <laughs> it's like, I said, yes, we'll take two. No, <laughs> but uh, um, he became a regular fixture at the Riverbank Run. He just loved coming to the race. We loved having him there. Um, he brought enthusiasm to the race. And that's why you bring people back, people that just enjoy coming back. They're going to race hard. Um, on any given day, only one person's going to win. But it's those who come in try their best but bring an enthusiasm to the event that you want to bring back over and over again. Um, he's actually made a really good living now being a pace setter for some of the major marathons around the world, which there's a lot of money in that. He's not a, he's not a dumb guy. Um, but we're trying to get him back this year, too, because he's, again, one of those special people that has meant a lot to the Riverbank Run. Well, one of the reasons the American uh, athletes are, are such a focus is it's been for the last 13 years or 12 years, uh, the USATF National Championship for the 25K distance. And that brings out a lot of American talent, doesn't it? It brings out some, not as many as you would think. The American athletes, it's one of the frustrations of the job, quite honestly, right now, is a lot of our American elite athletes don't want to race one another or they pick their spots in different ways. And we also butt up against Boston and London. So if the very best, whether it's Meb or uh, Ritzenheim or others, you know, they're looking at, okay, what marathon am I going to go to and make a lot of money? Um, and a lot of the other guys, it, it's, it's hard to get them to show up. The women, for the most part, have traditionally been a little bit easier. We get, some, you know, some top-notch women, but, you know, we've been lucky though. We had Dan Brown come in and run well. Last year, uh, really lucky with, you know, Fernando Cavada, who, you know, Fernando, yeah, still out. And he was mad we didn't know. It's like, you're still in college, man. <laughs> you know, you've only run low 28s. It's not like you set the world on fire. But he did a wonderful job last year in terms of the race itself. And that's what we love. I think it's important to mention about Cavada that he set a new American record winning that race, didn't he? Yeah, he did set the American record, which I thought was great. But what I thought was even more amazing was how aggressive he was to the Kenyans. I think it's hilarious. In the last two miles, he looks over, and I can't even remember who he was running with, and he said, it's go time, come on, let's go. He was waiting for him, and he said, come on, now's the time, let's go, and he ran away from him. Well, Greg, you've been involved with the race for 30 years. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the organization of the race and how it's changed over the years. Um, it's been amazing that with all the changes, because we've had different race directors that have come in and, and gone. Um, and in the early years, they really didn't have a running background. Um, actually, I don't think Kristen Adif has a running background yet. They adapt to the event and they somehow caught the spirit of what it should be. Um, in, in, the, in those early years, the Grand Rapids Track Club played a big part in setting the tone. Marty Allen, who was at the bank originally and got this started, um, really relied on a few of the people from the track club um, for guidance. And But the bank, through all those years, never stopped trying to make it better. Um, and the race directors over the years never stopped trying to make it better. And it, it, it fascinates me to watch. Now, 
Christian Adif and, and, and her group that have been managing it for the last uh, 10 or 12 years, um, they never sit still. They're always saying, what can we do next? How can we make this better? What, do we, what worked, what didn't work? Example of one of the changes, um, you've been helping to put together a, a, a training plan uh, for the race, and e even the training has changed, hasn't it? Yeah, people have demanded more, actually. You know, it, it, the early years, um, the training program was just how can we get a person from the start line to the finish line and not worry about time now there's an intermediate program so there's all these different things They'll, we'll publish a 5k training program um, but i think what is a, one of the greatest outcomes is the youth fitness program the feeling good mileage club i mean there are, I, I i'm guessing now i think it's somewhere around forty thousand kids who are impacted by this kent and ottawa county and that's huge just huge where we put a curriculum into the schools and teachers are running you see and you go visit these schools and that they're recess they're out running around the playground logging in their miles um the riverbank run is a huge place in american running history actually in international running history because of all the great athletes who, who've come come through what are some things you might be able to see for the future of the 25k fifth third riverbank run that's a good question i you know i think mean maintaining the level of excellence i actually can see a greater emphasis on the mass of runners as opposed to the elites i mean the elites are great and we love having them um but i don't see us ever at least right now, I don't see us ever trying to compete with a Boston or a London in terms of prize money. I can't see us having a million dollar purse. Um, and I don't know that it means that much to the people. They like having some elite athletes come. What I think they like even more is we've been able to attract elite athletes whose personality fit in with West Michigan and, and, the, and, and the runners well, really around the Midwest and they enjoy the runners. They get to go sit and talk with them. It's not like some places where they hide them away in you know secure locations. Our guys are walking around and you know do. You can go have pasta and they're sitting at the pasta dinner. They don't care. Those are the kinds of people that I hope we don't change in terms of who we attract in for the race. We we always love top talent, um, but I think it's important to bring the right personalities in. Greg, I want to thank you for all you've done to promote the Riverbank Run and running for the community in general. Here we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the 5th 3rd Riverbank Run, and once upon a time it was called the Old Kent Riverbank Run. But anyway, 30 years and counting. Thank you very much. And counting.